statistics and probability. Good morning. Welcome to statistics and probability. Today we will deal with relationships of two variables or variate data. Let us start with activity one. Determine whether the following shows direct or inverse relationship. One, age of the car and its price. Two, smoking and lung cancer. Three, contraceptives and pregnancy. Four, tickets sold and revenue. And five, studying and grade. Pause this video and answer the activity. A few moments later. Let us reveal the answers. For number one, age of the car and its price. It's inverse, meaning as the age of your car increases, the price of it decreases. Smoking and lung cancer, direct, meaning as you increase your smoking or the number of cigarettes you smoke, it will have a great chance of having a lung cancer. Contraceptives and pregnancy, it's inverse. So the more you use contraceptives, the lesser you will have, your, the lesser you will be pregnant. Ticket sold and revenue, direct. The greater the number of tickets sold, the greater the revenue. And studying and grade, it's also direct. The more you study, the greater chance of having a higher grade. What is univariate and bivariate? Univariate when one measurement is made on each observation. Bivariate where exactly two measurements are made on each observation. When you say multivariate, there are more than one measurement is made on each observation. What is the purpose of bivariate analysis? The purpose of bivariate data analysis is to explain and explore the concept of relationship between two variables, whether there exists an association and the strength of this association, or whether there are differences between two variables and the significance of these differences. How to show the relationships of two variables? Do you know scatterplot? What is scatterplot? Scatterplot is a type of plot or mathematical diagram using Cartesian coordinates to display values or typically two variables for a set of data. So we have here examples of scatterplot with their description. Perfect positive, strong positive, Moderate positive, no relationship, moderate negative, strong negative, and perfect negative. When you say perfect positive, it is a straight line leaning towards the right. This means a perfect direct relationship of variables. When one variable increases, then the other variable increases also. So we can see that straight line. Strong positive. There are few gaps on the values, but a trend line could be formed going up to the right. When one variable increases, then a big tendency for the other variable to increase. So we have that trend of line. Moderate positive. More gaps, but still you can form trend line which is going up to the right. When one variable increases, then a tendency for the other variable to increase. So the trend line is like that. So we can still form a trend line. For no relationship, points are totally scattered and you cannot form one trend line. The variables are not affected by each other. Moderate negative, it shows an inverse relationship. When variable increases, when one variable increases, then a tendency for the other variable to decrease and vice versa. So this is the trend line of the moderate negative. Strong negative, similar to strong positive, but towards left direction. It shows when one variable increases, then a big tendency for the other variable to decrease. So that is the trend line for strong negative. And for perfect negative, opposite of perfect positive. 
When one variable increases, then the other variable will decrease and vice versa. So that's the perfect negative trend line. Let us have activity 2. Apply your learning. Plot the given data of the following and describe the relationship. The table below shows the age of students and the respective shoe sizes. So we have here 11, 11, 12, 12, 12, 3, 13, and 2, 14 year old students and then the shoe sizes of the respective students. Pause this video and answer. A few moments later. Let us have the answers. So this is the graph of our data with ages 11 to 14 and shoe size from 6 to 9. And we can draw a trend line and we can see that it is strongly or moderately positive. So there's the meaning of this is there is a tendency for as you increase the age of your student, there's a tendency that there is also an increase in the shoe size. Moving on, what test statistics do we need? In determining the strength of relationship of two variables. Do you know something? How about person R? What is person R? Pearson correlation R measures the statistical relationship or association between two continuous variables. This is the formula where R is equal to and multiply to the summation of the product of x, y, minus the product of summation of x and summation of y, all over the square root of the product of two groups here, where in the first group, the n times to the square of the, the summation of x squared minus to the square of the summation of x, multiply to the group of n times to the square or the summation of y squared minus the square of the summation of y. And this is the description of R value. If our R is positive 1, it is perfect positive relationship. But if it's negative 1, it is perfect negative relationship. So a range of 0.7 to 0.99, this means a very strong positive or negative relationship. A range of 0.4 to 0.69, meaning there's a strong positive or negative relationship. If the range is 0 0.3 to 0 0.39, it has a moderate strong or moderate positive negative relationship. From 0.2 to 0 0.29, it has a weak or positive weak positive or negative relationship. But if it is 0.1 to 0.19, it is negligible or there's a negligible relations. And if it's zero, meaning it has no relationship. Let us have an example. The table below shows the data between the number of hours studying and the scores of the test of eight of, of the eight students. So the number of hours of studying. You have two, four, five, seven, three, one, six, and four. And the respective scores of the students. We have 58, 32, 63, 87, 67, 35, 70, and 65. What can we say to the relationship of the number of hours of studying to the scores. We cannot apply the six steps here. So please take note of the answers. Step one, the null hypothesis. There is no relationship between the number of hours of studying to the scores of the students in the test. In symbols, R is zero. Alternative hypothesis, there is a relationship between the number of hours of studying to the scores of the students in the test. In symbols, R is not equal to zero. In step two, we directly lead to the test statistic because here we don't use level of significance. So for step two, the test statistic is the Pearson correlation R. Step three, it's not about 
the rejection region but about the description of R. So here are the description of R. Stuff form will, new, will now be about the computation of our R. So this is our data. We added another column to the left, I mean to the right, about the total. So the total X or the total number of R's is 32 and the total scores or Y is 477. Now we move on to X, Y. When we say X, it's the product of X and Y. So 2 times 58, we have 116. 4 times 32, 128. 5 times 63, it's 315. 7 times 87, it's 609. 3 times 67 is 201. 1 times 35 is 35. 6 times 70 is 420. And 4 times 65 is 260. And then we add it up, we come up with 2084. Next value we need to look is the square of x. So we multiply by itself the values of x. So 2 times 2, 4. 4 times 4, 16. 5 times 5, 25. 7 times 7, 49. 3 times 3 is 9. 1 times 1 is 1. 6 times 6 is 36. 4 times 4 is 16. So we have the total x squared which is or the summation of x squared is 156. Next is the y squared. So the product of y and y. So 58 times 58 is 3,364. 32 times 32 is 1,024. 63 times 63 is 3,969. 87 times 87 is 7,569. 67 times 67 is 4,489. 35 times 35 is 1,225. 70 times 70 is 4,900. And 65 times 65 is 4,225. And the summation of y squared is 30,765. So now let's done our given. So the summation of x is 32. Summation of y is 477. Summation of x and y is 2,084. Summation of x squared is 156. Summation of y squared is 3,000, I mean 30,765, and our sample size is 8. And now we're ready for the formula. So this is the formula of R, so we need to substitute our given. So R is equal to 8 times 2,084 minus 32 times 477 all over the square root of we have here the quantity of 8 times 156 minus square of 32 multiplied to the quantity of 8 times 30,765 minus 4 square of 477. So by using our calculator, so 8 times 2084 is 16,673, I 72, and 32 times 477 is 15,264. And 8 times 1,156 is 1,248, and square of 32 is 1,024. Then 8 times 30,765 is, we have 246,120, and square of 477 is 227,529. So our R becomes 1. So 16,672 minus 15,264 is 1,048, 1,408 I mean. And then 1,248 minus 1,024 is 224 and 246,120 minus 227,529 is 18,591. Moving on, our R is equal to 1,408 over the square root of 4,164,384. And then we have here, R is 1,048 1, over 2,040.68. So our R becomes here equals 0 0.69. So description, strong positive relationship. So for our decision, step 5, 
The computed value of R is 0 0.69, which means there is a strong positive relationship between the number of R studying to the scores of the students on test. This further suggests that as the number of R's of study increases, there's a big tendency that the scores of the students will be high. It is your turn to answer. The table below shows the number of R's watching TV and the grade of the student. So we have here eight students interviewed with the number of R's, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 10, 11, and 12. And their grades, 89, 85, 76, 81, 78, 74, 71, 65. What can we say to the relationship of the number of hours of watching TV to the grades? Pause this video and answer. A few moments later. Are you done answering? Let us reveal the answers. Step 1. Null hypothesis. There is no relationship between the number of hours of watching TV to the grades. And then symbol R equals 0. Alternative hypothesis, there's a relationship between the number of R's of watching TV to the grades. R is not equal to 0 in symbols. Step 2, Pearson correlation R. Step 3, the description of R. Step 4, we have here the data and the total number of hours of watching TV is 63 and the total grades of the 8th student is 619. So we'll start with XY. 2 times 89 is 178. 4 times 85 is 340. 6 times 76 is 456. 8 times 81 is 648. 10 times 78 is 780. 10 times 74 is 740. 11 times 71 is 781, and 12 times 65 is 780, and we have 4,703 as the sum of xy. x squared, so 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 4 is 16, 6 times 6 is 36, 8 times 8 is 64, 10 times 10 is 100, 10 times 10 is 100, 11 times 11 121, and 12 times 12 144, with a total of 585. Moving on, the y squared. 170, I mean 89 times 89 is 7,921. 85 times 85 is 7,225. 76 times 76 is 5,776. 81 times 81 is 6,561. 78 times 78 is 6,084. 74 times 74 is 5,476. 71 and 71 is 5,041 and 65 and 65 is 4,228 with a total of 48,309. So, this is our summa, um, summation of x, 63, summation of y, 619, summation of x, 4,703, summation of x squared is 585, summation of y squared is 48,309, and our sample size is 8. This is the formula. Substituting so, into the formula, so R equals 8 times 4,073 4, minus 63 times 619 all over the square root of the quantity of 8 times 485 minus square of 63 times to the quantity of 8 times 48,309 minus the square of 619. Then we have here R is equal to 37,624 minus 38,997 over the square root of 4,680 minus 3,969 times to the quantity of 386,472 minus 383,161. So we have here R is equal to negative 1,373 over the square root of the product of 711 and 3. 1,311. So we have R is equal to the negative 1,373 over the square root of 2,354,121. So R is equal to negative 1,373 over 
1534.315, so our R is negative 0.89. This is a very strong negative relationship. So our step 5, the computed value of R is negative 0.89, which means there is a very strong negative relationship between the number of R's watching TV to the grades. This further suggests that as the number of R's of watching TV increases, there's a big tendency that the grades of the students will be low. If you have some suggestions, comments, and queries regarding our topic, just give your thoughts on the comment section or directly ask me through Messenger. Thank you and see you next topic.